Rowena, good morning. ASM has just completed a successful institutional placement of raising $15 million and is now doing a consequent additional $5.2 million Australian. Can you provide an update on how that's going? Well, the placement uh, was oversubscribed. We were uh, very happy to see the support that we had for it. Uh, the entitlement offer, we've already had strong commitment from existing shareholders for uh, just under $1.5 million. So, uh, we'll just um, see where that lands at the end of the process, which is another couple of weeks away. Um, but, you know, that money is to enable us to demonstrate the co-commitments that we need uh, to be able to access the government funding that has been offered to us in recent weeks. And, you know, the government funding is a significant amount more in value than the placement. So we're very excited about what this influx of funds is going to allow us to do as we uh, progress the development of our Dubbo project. Of course, that has been the headline that we've been marketing recently having to do with ASM is the significant and substantial commitments that you're receiving from governments literally everywhere. Let's start with Australia, please. Australia has uh, the EDC, Export Finance Australia, has said that they have a $200 million Australian letter of support. Can you talk to us about your support from Australia? So the Export Finance Australia gave us a letter of support for $200 million Aussie, you know, some time ago. But what we have had terrific support from EFA, uh, particularly in the last 12 months, is introducing us to other export credit agencies in other jurisdictions where they are working in alliance uh, in order to support funding of the development of this critical mineral supply chain. And what we've seen increasingly in the last six months is really active cooperation between the ECAs. So, you know, that um, combined with the government to government support that we're seeing, particularly between Australia and the US, uh, resulted in us then getting the letter of support from the United States Export and Import Bank, uh, USXM, for the 600 million US uh, letter of support or letter of interest it is for the um, execution phase, which was a very, very strong signal for us um, and has had a significant amount of interest uh, from other um, funding agencies but also from the off-takers who were in discussion with, which has been really uh, encouraging. Of course, that was my headline question, is that you had secured the $600 million U.S. from Export-Import uh, USA. Now, in addition to that, I noticed in the news release that you had referenced that EDC, Canada's official export credit agency, has shown interest. I'm not really sure what that means. They reference a debt financing package, and you just, of course, alluded to the fact that the announcement from the U.S. has undoubtedly opened a cavalcade of interest. Can you provide an update on Canadian interest, please? So the um, Export Development Canada um, also has given us a letter for $400 million Australian, both the the US and the Canadian export finance is conditional on content from their jurisdiction in the project. So some of those funds are actually competing for the same portion of the project and some of it is additive. Um, but what we're really pleased is, is that we're starting to see multiple jurisdictions supporting their engineering companies to put really competitive bids in to participate in the construction phase of the project. USXM also, in addition to their letter of interest for the $600 million, they also um, have given us an additional letter of support for $32 million US to support Bechtel Engineering to do the final phase of the engineering work for us. Um, and that's, as far as I'm aware, the US are the only export credit agency that provide this product where they will help fund the last bit of engineering prior to construction. Uh, so that for us is a really important development as well because that last bit of engineering has been 
quite troublesome to get the funding to be able to progress. And we can't take FID without having completed that work. So now we've got a pathway through to FID, which again is fantastic. So for everybody out there who is grabbing their calculators, we can <laughs> confirm that this is well over a $1.1 billion in commitments from various governments to support you in getting more of your downstream infrastructure in place. Can you confirm, can you confirm that, that is correct? Yes, if I put it all into Australian um, dollars, the, the US have given us uh, a commitment for just under a billion dollars, both the construction and the engineering work combined. Um, and then the EFA is 200 and the EDC is another 400. You can't add it all up because as I said, some of it is for competing scope. So it's not all additive, but it's well, well in addition now uh, of the $1.1 uh, $1 billion. Uh, and you know, that that is a very strong position for us. But they're not the only export credit agencies that we're speaking to. We're still speaking uh, in Korea. We're still speaking in Europe. Um, and those agencies are still very interested in supporting the project as we finalise which jurisdictions the offtake is going into. And uh, whereas the US and Canada are supporting it based on the content of the engineering work, uh, some of the other export credit agencies are really interested in supporting once we've decided which jurisdictions the offtakes are going to be going to. Your numbers are vastly superior to many of the companies that are out there right now announcing such interest. Can you tell us, for those of you out there that may be new to the ASM story, Australian Strategic Materials, what makes you so competitive? What critical minerals you know, does Dubbo have that you will be producing that these countries need so desperately? So we're making light rare earths, uh, the neodymium praseodymium, which are the essential component for the high performance magnets that are used in many of the clean technologies, certainly essential for the wind turbines and the electric vehicles, for example. Um, but one of the things that really distinguishes ASM is that we have a very high proportion of the heavy rare earths in that deposit as well, an unusually high proportion and those are particularly scarce outside of the established supply chain currently. So that's exciting. And then um, very uniquely, we have three other critical minerals that are on most of the Western countries' uh, critical minerals lists. In addition, we've got zirconia, we've got hafnia, and we've got niobium. And in addition to the traditional applications, uh, there are some really interesting new applications being developed in the semiconductor industry with those materials. Um, so again, really interesting materials for us to watch. In addition to the critical minerals you have that all the governments do want, uh, ASM is developing, uh, you know, further refining at your Korean metals plant, which is obviously a competitive advantage. Can you provide an update? Yes. So one of the real strengths as we're talking to potential off-takers for Dubbo is that not only can we take it through to a high purity oxide, but we can take it all the way through metal and alloy in our Korean facility. And that's already in production. And uh, we've been producing and delivering the, the metal now to customers for um, over 18 months. Uh, but we now are at the very final stages with a number of customers uh, in Europe, in Korea and in the US providing commercial size samples which is the last phase in the product validation process of those strip alloys, the specialist alloys that are the feedstock directly into those magnet producers. So uh, this is a very important milestone for us uh, that we're uh, hitting this quarter and it puts us on track for being able to finalise commercial arrangements for sales uh, in the second half of this year. So that's really exciting for us. I think, you know, we've talked a lot about debt funding for uh, Dubbo and, um, you know, I think the other piece is equity. Uh, so another focus for us in this second half is really talking to some of the sovereign funds that are established in Australia, in the US and in Europe uh, that have got equity uh, in their mandate because, uh, having a, a really strong equity position uh, for this funding is also an important piece for us to deliver financial investment decision. Rowena, thank you so much for your time. 
And for everybody out there wanting to learn more, ASM has an excellent website, which you can reach at the following link. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy.